Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Virginia Virtual College Fair. We're so excited to have you all here. We have six wonderful institutions here to tell you a little bit about what they do. Uh, but before we get to that, I know that all of you might want to hear a little bit about what the format for today's session may be. Uh, so we have six col colleges and institutions here. Each will talk for about six minutes each. Uh, you'll have time for questions, and you might be wondering, how do I ask those questions? You can go ahead to the Q&A option at the bottom of your screen. Click that and you'll be able to send your questions through that feature. Um, everyone's here to answer those throughout the session, so feel free to send them as early in the session as you'd like, um, and we're happy to work through those. Know that your camera and microphone are off and they will remain off for the entire session, and so really that Q&A is the best way for you to interact with our institutions here today. Um, I do want to mention that you can sign up for additional sessions and you could do so at www.strivescan.com backslash Virginia and also that this session is being recorded and that will be available on that same website within the next seven days or so. And so with that, we'll go ahead and get started. I will pass things off to Catholic University of America. Welcome. Just gonna go ahead and share my screen from the beginning. Excellent. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. My name is Rebecca Allen, Senior Associate Dean of Undergraduate Admission, and I work with students from Northern Virginia. My colleague Kevin works with students from the rest of the state. Catholic University was founded in 1887 as a graduate research center. And so that piece of research is something that is still very prevalent on our campus today. Uh, students can begin doing research alongside their professors when they come to campus as freshmen. And every April, we do have our University Research Day. It's a, a campus-wide academic festival, so to speak. Classes are canceled, food trucks will come to campus, uh, and it's a really wonderful way to be able to see the academic work that our students, both undergrad and grad, have been doing throughout the course of their year. We have 31 different on-campus research centers. Um, and we do also have our Catholic University in Rome campus. Um, we have 96 programs on six of the seven continents, though Rome is, is our flagship program, and every single student on campus, regardless of major, can study abroad. At Catholic, we are the National University of the Catholic Church, so unlike some other schools with direct religious affiliations with, say, the Jesuits or the Dominicans, we are the Bishop's University at Catholic, and that's something that we're really proud of. We have about 3,300 undergraduate students on campus, 2,600 graduate and law students. So really a nice small to medium sized school. You can study things at Catholic that you would find at huge research universities, but you can do so in classes of, of 18 or 19 students. 80% of our students do indicate that they're Catholic when they submit their application, but we're certainly welcoming to students of all faiths and backgrounds. We have students from 50, all 50 states on campus and from almost 90 different countries, so really reflective of the diversity of Washington, D.C. Uh, we are the largest self-contained campus in D.C. Uh, we sit on about 176 acres, but our students very much have the best of both worlds. You have that traditional college campus feel, as you can see from all of the green in this photo. Um, but we do also have a metro stop on campus. So you can be on the National Mall on Capitol Hill within about 10 minutes, just a couple of metro stops away. Freshmen, sophomores, and juniors are required to live on campus throughout their, their time at Catholic. Seniors do have the choice to move off campus if they'd like. Most off-campus housing is directly across the street. We have a new dining hall and a new residence hall coming in 2022. So those are things certainly to look forward to. And then in terms of campus life, our students are super, super involved. We have over 100 clubs and organizations. Anything that you're doing in high school, you absolutely can continue at Catholic. We have 25 different NCAA Division III sports, intramural sports, club sports. Um, and then Campus Ministry is our largest organization on campus for students who are looking to continue to grow in their faith, get involved in our resident minister program, um, continue to, to get involved in masses, but also for students who are interested in pursuing community service. Our students will go to about 60 to 70 different community service sites each week in DC, and there are opp opportunities for mission trips and service trips over spring break as well as over the summer. So that certainly is a huge part of what our students are doing. These are the nine different undergraduate schools that we offer at Catholic. Um, Again, you can study things at Catholic uh, that you would find it at big, huge universities. Some notable programs, nursing, um, politics is our single largest major on campus. 
musical theater uh, does require an audition and we do have an affiliation um, with Broadway. So students are back and forth to New York quite a bit. Uh, and we do have a dual degree program with architecture and civil engineering. We're one of only a handful of colleges in the country to offer that program. Just to note that our School of Nursing is the only school that you do have to apply directly into coming out of high school. All of these other schools, you have the opportunity to um, kind of switch, switch among themselves once you're on campus. But nursing, at no point throughout your four years can you transfer in. You can, however, always transfer out. So that is always something that I like to mention. We do also have our pre-professional advising programs in pre-law and then in any of the, the pre-health professions. Um, this is a sense of our application review. Your high school transcript is the most important thing in our process. The classes that you've taken over four years and then the grades that you've gotten throughout those courses. We require a counselor and a teacher recommendation as well as the common application essay and Catholic University statement about your interest in Catholic. It's a really great way to distinguish yourself throughout the application. We are test blind, so we will not consider test scores at all throughout our process. Uh, and that's true for everything. So it's true for all of our majors, for merit scholarships, financial aid, um, and then of course for admission. We are no longer considering test scores. Um, we also do not charge an application fee. Our early action and early decision deadlines are coming up on November 1st, and then our regular decision and early decision two deadlines on January 15th. We review applications at Catholic exactly the same at early as we do at regular. So really no competitive advantage there for you. Um, whatever works best for you works best for us. Um, and I do always just like to mention that we are looking for, for everything else that you've done throughout high school. So we really are looking to continue to enhance and foster a tight knit community on our campus. So we're looking for students who are involved in a whole number of different things uh, who can bring different types of service and leadership to us. Um, we do offer personal interviews. They're optional as part of the process. You can schedule an interview through our admission website directly, um, either interviewing with, with me or my colleague, Kevin. Um, and that's a really great way for us to be able to put a face with a name uh, before your application comes across our desk over the course of the next couple of months. Uh, we will automatically consider your application for merit scholarships, no separate application needed. Um, and you are required to submit both the FAFSA as well as the CSS profile for need-based financial aid. 95% of our students are receiving either merit scholarships, need-based aid, or a combination of the two. Um, and as we finish up today, here's my email. If you have any questions, you can follow up. And again, the links to sign up for an interview, to take a virtual tour and make sure that you're following us on social media, uh, especially through Instagram. Uh, and thank you so much. Wonderful, thank you so much for sharing a little bit about Catholic University of America. We'll go ahead and head on over to University of Florida. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all for coming today. Uh, I'm actually uh, filling in for my colleague, Dennis Barnes. Uh, my name is Colin Conroy. Uh, I'm an admissions officer here with the University of Florida. Uh, I typically handle uh, the Panhandle territory, but I'm stepping in tonight uh, to help out. Uh, so welcome. I'm hoping to give you some good information about the University of Florida. I hope, you get, hope to get you excited about it and hope to see your application come across our desk uh, this application cycle. All right, so first we are located in Gainesville, Florida, uh, which is in the heart uh, of North Central Florida. We are the oldest and most prestigious university in the state of Florida. Uh, we are currently ranked six nationally across all public universities, uh, and we are one of seven university, uh, 17 universities in the entire country uh, that falls under land, sea, and space grant institutions. Uh, so we're really, really, really big on research down here. Uh, last year, we, we received almost, almost $1 billion uh, in research uh, funding, uh, and students can get involved in research from day one, so from the moment they on campus, they can get in touch uh, with our undergraduate research opportunity in their office. Uh, and so they have opportunities uh, that are available to them, not just uh, as they get upper, into their upper division year uh, here on campus. Uh, so UF sits on about 2,000 acres, but the actual uh, campus area where most of the students' classes are going to be are in about a mile to mile and a half radius. Uh, it's a really easy campus to get around. Uh, you can get around with a bike, scooter, uh, walking. We have a really robust bus system uh, that you get access to for free uh, as a student. 
Uh, currently, we have about 55,000 total students. Uh, this does include our UF online population of students as well. About 38,000 of those students are undergrad, and about 17,000 of those make up our grad students and professional students on campus. Um, so Gainesville itself uh, is, a, is a small town, um, but it has a really big college town feel. Uh, and whatever you're looking for to do here, uh, you can pretty much find it. Uh, it's about an hour and a half from the beach, about 40, 45 minutes from the springs. Uh, we do have our own airport. Uh, it does uh, make stops to Atlanta, Miami, Charlotte, uh, and Dallas, so it does have a way to get in and out uh, if you choose not to drive. Uh, it's got a lot of nature around, a lot of hikes, uh, so it's definitely a place where you, if you like to be outdoors, if you like to do things with nature, uh, you've got a lot of opportunities to pursue those uh, here in Gainesville. Now, as far as our university is concerned, uh, we do have over 100 different major opportunities to choose from, uh, and we are major blind when you apply. Uh, so even though you may indicate what major you would like to pursue here at University of Florida, uh, it does not go into any of our admissions uh, considerations. Uh, you can change it uh, the moment you walk on campus. Uh, so about two thirds of our students will change uh, majors more than once. Uh, I myself was one of them. I believe I changed three or four times uh, by the time I uh, finished up my time here. I finally did settle in education uh, and I was really, really glad uh, that I did. But UF gave me that opportunity to kind of pursue uh, multiple career choices without locking into one. Uh, so you do have to choose a major by the end of your sophomore year, but you definitely have ample time to kind of look through and figure out what it is you exactly want to do uh, before you get to campus here. As far as our deadlines are concerned, uh, so we only have one deadline uh, and that's for our priority application, which is November 1st. Uh, so your application must be on file by November 1st to be considered for that priority application. While our application will stay open uh, until the March 1st, uh, that deadline is on a space available basis. So please make sure if you do want to consider UF as an option uh, that you do get that application in by uh, November 1st. Now, currently we are not test optional. That decision has to be made uh, by the State of Florida Board of Governors uh, that oversees all 12 state university, uh, new state universities here in Florida. Uh, so that is not a decision uh, that we have control over at this time. Uh, we do support uh, going to test optional, but at this time we are not test optional. So we are still requiring uh, both SAT and ACT test scores uh, to be considered a complete application. Uh, December 1st is when your SAR is due uh, or student self-reported academic record. And basically, we do not require you to send us transcripts unless you are an admitted student here. So the SAR is going to be your chance to input your grades for 9th, 10th, and 11th grade. And for 12th grade, you're going to input your courses that you're currently signed up for. So we want to see how you're challenging yourself uh, for that senior year. Uh, the last deadline that you need to be concerned with is December 15th, and that's when we need to have your ACT or SAT scores. Uh, now, what is a little bit different about it this year is obviously we know there's been a lot of issues as far as testing availability. Uh, some students have been able to test, some students have only been able to test once or are still waiting to get that test. Uh, so if students are signed up for those December test dates, I believe uh, there's December 2nd and December 6th, somewhere in early December, uh, but you can still take those tests and send us those scores. So as long as those scores are sent to us before December 15th, uh, we will accept them if they arrive after that date. So we just need those scores sent to us uh, by December 15th. Uh, so as I mentioned, in order to be considered for our party application, all three of those deadlines have to be met. So if you miss the SAR deadline or miss your, your score deadline, uh, that will knock you out of that priority application deadline. So please make sure uh, if you are looking to come to UF that you do get all three of those deadlines hit uh, in order to be considered for that priority application. As far as our review process is concerned, we have two different parts that we're looking at. So we're looking at the holistic review as well as the academic review. Uh, so the for holistic review, we do have an essay. So on our website, uh, whether you choose the common or coalition application, it doesn't matter. Um, it all has the same choices. Uh, I believe we have 10 different options right now as far as your essay is concerned. Um, but really, uh, you, can, you can do your own. So we do not uh, take letters of recommendation and we also do not do interviews. So we always tell students to think of this uh, as your interview with us. So it, uh, the essay comes up to about uh, a page typed, uh, so about 500 to 600 words. Uh, please make sure you get started early on that. Uh, it's definitely not an exercise in grammar or spelling. Uh, you know, please don't let that take away from what you're trying to write to us, uh, but please make sure that you know, it is looked over by someone else and that you do get it um, you know, reviewed. But it's okay to step outside that box as far as the essay is concerned. Uh, we really wanna see words in there like I, me, and my. Uh, I get a lot of good essays uh, written about parents and grandparents, aunts and uncles. Uh, unfortunately, we're not looking to admit them, we're looking to admit you, the student. Uh, so make sure you think of that as you interview and really sell yourself uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, here is our academic profile for last year. Uh, so we did have a GPA of 4.3 to 4.6. There's our SAT and ACT scores. 
We have over a thousand different student organizations that you can take a part of on campus. Uh, so definitely take a chance, check out our website and see if there's any that interest you. If there's not, you can definitely choose some and start your own. Here is our contact information as far as how to stay, get information from us. Uh, we're on all available social media platforms. Um, and if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. We'll be happy to answer for them. Go Gators. Thank you so much, University of Florida. Now we'll head on over to Greensboro. Hey everybody, welcome today. Uh, my name is Zach Frone. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Greensboro College, uh, the specific one in charge of the state of Virginia. So if you do apply to Greensboro College, I'll be the one who's kind of working with you. So I'll be taking you through a quick presentation about Greensboro College. Uh, we have about we have 38 undergraduate majors, uh, 29 of those can be minors. Our students represent about 30 states across the United States and 21 countries throughout the world. Uh, we are sitting right around 1,000 students currently right now as enrollment. Uh, with about a 40% ethnic minority and multicultural student. Um, our 38 majors are housed under five schools of studies, uh, School of Arts, Business, Humanities, Science, Mathematics, and Social Sciences and Education. Uh, and we have eight pre-professional programs that are kind of rolled within those, uh, those five schools. Some of our popular undergraduate majors are Criminal Justice, uh, Business, Education, uh, Biology, Exercise and Sports Studies, and then our Theater and Music program. Uh, those, both of those require auditions to get into the program itself. Uh, so education made personal, I don't know if you find this a lot at the smaller institutions, uh, is that since only a school of a thousand students, uh, professors and advisors will know your name, uh, which also leads right into the amount of one-on-one -on -one support that you have the ability to get. Um, our average class size sits right around 12, uh, which is about a nine to one student teacher uh, ratio. Uh, we are a universal for design learning institution. There's about 30 across the United States. Uh, and the easiest way to kind of explain it is just like your fingerprint, everyone is different. Uh, same with your learning style, everyone's different in the way they learn. And what UDL is just allows us to have a curriculum uh, that uh, gives us the ability to kind of apply to the masses. Uh, so you don't have any barriers when it comes down to education. Um, our big city connections, so very uh, unique to us is that we are located right next to downtown Greensboro. Uh, so a city of about 300,000 people, uh, about 50,000 of that is college students. So you're only about 1,000 of those 50,000 college students. So you have access right into the downtown scene as well as the other institutions that are there in Greensboro. Uh, so we like to say small enough to be comfortable but challenging enough to grow. So you have your 32 acres of campus. Uh, it's about 600 students on campus currently with about 400 of those being uh, graduate students, commuters, um, or uh, master's degree students. Uh, but just have the ability to have your home base but then access into the downtown and access to the other institutions that are right next door. Uh, our career connections and enrichment programs, um, all of our career and internship opportunities are run through our career services offices. Um, we actually now require sophomores to, to take the uh, CLD 1100 course, uh, which is basically kind of a, a major course, kind of looking a deep dive into yourself, uh, into the majors that Greensboro College and the other institutions have to offer. 99% um, of our students have to complete an internship or practicum before graduating. Uh, that 1% is the theater, music, and arts uh, degrees specifically. Uh, they have a, a senior showcase for arts, uh, a senior recital for music, uh, specifically if an instrument or vocal. Uh, and then for theater, it is their senior, uh, uh, their senior performance. Uh, our first year experience, our Greensboro College seminar starts at your orientation, uh, the first year experience, and then kind of bleeds into your first semester as a freshman with the GCS class. Um, so it is a two hour class that just kind of gets your feet wet at the institution um, and as a freshman in college, just to make sure that you are gonna be most successful through your four years of school. Uh, the Sankofa, Sankofa Center for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion is one of our newest um, offices or new, our newest areas on campus specifically. Um, Greensboro College, regardless of your race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, religion, gender, or age, uh, the Office of DEI Inclusion provides advocacy programming services to foster an environment where everyone feels welcome. Um, and our, that's really what our campus is kind of rooted into. Um, the George Center for Honors is our honors program at school. Uh, that is something that you apply for or you, you get the admissions requirements after you've been accepted into the school itself. Um, it does offer a more rigorous uh, general education uh, curriculum uh, on top of exploration and research opportunities within the program itself. Uh, the PEAK is our personal enrichment knowledge, which is our tutorial services. Uh, our academic advisors are located there and free tutorial services for all of our students. Uh, so jumping to a whole new you, we have about 17 uh, student-run organizations on campus, uh, about five of those being religious affiliated, uh, the Entrepreneurship Club, Pride of the Pride, uh, the Collegian, which is our newspaper that runs along with the Lear, which is our literary magazine, 
uh, the Urban Guardian, the UAS are just a couple of those uh, specific organizations. Uh, and then we also have our Village 401, which is our community service uh, on campus. So if community service is something that is important to you, it's something that you can continue on through your years of college. Um, and then we do have three specific schools that we consortium with for study abroad, a school in England, Ireland, and Germany. Uh, but then we have access to the other schools study abroad programs through the consortium that we have with some of the other institutions that are in our area. Uh, we have 18 men's division three, uh, men's and women's division three sports. Uh, we part of the USA South Conference. I call this our brag slide. Um, as uh, your undergraduate experience, your four years of college is your stepping stone into your next venture of life, whether that be going into the job force um, or going into your graduate school degree. Um, once again, your four years is just your stepping stone on this. So this is just a few of the places that our graduates have gone on to, whether that is job um, or graduate school. Um, our application is free. Uh, we are a rolling application process. Uh, we are not on the Common App. Uh, we are located right on our website at greensboro.edu. Um, but we do have a test optional application online as well. Um, so regular application is the complete online application, high school transcript, test scores. Um, if not, we do have a the test optional essay uh, that is required for the test optional application. Um, in the normal application, we do not require an essay. We do have a personal statement. And I always say try to put something down on there. Um, affordable meets exceptional. Uh, our projected tuition fees are right around 19,000 with room and board. You're looking at a total cost of 29,000. So we're one of the ch uh, cheapest private institutions uh, in the state of North Carolina. Um, and then we do have an array of merit scholarships that are based off of your weighted GPA and test scores that you are awarded upon acceptance into the school. Uh, we do use the FAFSA for any other institutional need-based aid or federal aid. And our school code is right there. And then my contact information is right here. If you do have any questions, please visit us at greensboro.edu. Appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Greensboro. Before we head to our next institution, I do want to remind everyone of that Q&A fun function. And so if you have any questions about any of the institutions you've already heard from or that you're about to hear from, please feel free to send those questions through um, whenever you'd like. Uh, but now we'll go ahead and head on over to Fairmont State. Good evening, my name is Harry Jeffries. I'm with Fairmont State University. I'm an admissions counselor here. I or one of my colleagues in the Office of Recruitment will be glad to help you navigate through choosing a major or contacting one of our world-class faculty members. Fairmont State University sits on a charming hilltop campus in Fairmont, West Virginia. We're located in North Central West Virginia. We are approximately one hour and 40 minutes from Pittsburgh, three and a half hours from Baltimore, Maryland. Because of this proximity, you have access to outdoor adventures such as hiking, biking, skiing, all within just one or two hour drive. And since we're close to major cities such as Columbus and Washington DC, our campus community regularly travels to these cities to experience their world-class arts, shopping, dining, and professional sports. Fairmont State University has five resident halls with a wide range of living options from single suites to quads. And because of our size, campus residents are never more than a short five to 10 minute walk from classes, dining, or recreation. There's also plenty of parking available whether you live on campus or off campus. And your parking permit is built into your tuition fee so you are not charged extra for having a car on campus. The hub, of our campus centers around the Falcon Center, which is featured in this slide. The Falcon Center has a quarter mile indoor track. It is home to our dining centers. We also have a Starbucks, a Chick-fil-A, a Chalaka, and there's a lap pool and the recreation center has weight machines and free weights. Fairmont State University offers over 50 undergraduate degree programs and 100 programs of study. We offer several programs you can't find anywhere else in the state of West Virginia, including national security and intelligence, community health education, architecture, and we are the state's only FAA Part 141 flight school. You're sure to find a major you love, whether you're in the science, the arts, business, or any other academic programs that Fairmont State University has to offer. And if you're sure not what, not what you want to major in, 
We also have groups of academic programs with overlapping research and creative interest, related coursework and similar career paths called Academic Pathways, which allow you to explore an area of interest while also helping you stay on track to graduate on time and save tuition dollars. And no matter what your major is, there's no excuse not to be successful at Fairmont State University. Our tutoring and testing center services are free for students, and there is no cap on the number of hours that you may take advantage of. Participating in a club or organization is a great way to explore a field you love and build friendships that last a lifetime. Fairmont State has over 60 clubs and organizations, so you're sure to find something you enjoy. We also have a vibrant Greek life community with three fraternities and three sororities. We offer dozens of intramural activities, including solo and team sports, and we offer club sports. <clears throat> we have a combined 17 sports for men and women in the Division II Mountain East Conference. Fairmont State University not only has one of the lowest tuition rates in the state, but because we have such stellar outcomes, our value is unmatched. In addition to the financial aid and academic programs that are structured to help you graduate on time, we offer several scholarships for first-time freshmen. We have scholarships based on factors such as financial need or academic standing. You can find a complete searchable list of our scholarships at fairmontstate.edu scholarships. We also have, for Virginia residents, what we call our Metro rate. An out-of-state student would have an estimated cost of attendance of $29,544 for the 2021 academic year. Being a Metro rate student, that rate is $24,337. This can add up to savings of $20,000 over the course of a four-year academic period. If you like what you're seeing and hearing, applying to Fairmont State is fast and easy. The full list is at our website at fairmontstate.edu slash apply. But here's a quick rundown of what you'll need. You need a 2.0 high school or homeschool GPA. We need college transcripts for any dual enrollment courses you may have taken and your immunization records. We require an 18 ACT or a 950 SAT test, but please be aware, due to the COVID pandemic, we currently have suspended the ACT and SAT requirements. This is not a change in our policy, this is merely a waiver for the 21 fall academic year. This is our contact information. Also at our fairmontstate.edu admissions page, we have a live chat Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And this is my contact information. You may call me, you may text me, you may email me. And at the top of the page, you can see where it says register inquire. If you would like more information on Fairmont State, you may go there and you'll receive it. Thank you for your time. Thank you for allowing me to present what Fairmont State University has to offer. Thank you so much, Fairmont State. I uh, will go ahead and head on over to Virginia Military Institute. Um, VMI is um, VMI is the oldest senior military college in the country, uh, the, the, along with the other senior military colleges of Norwich, the Citadel, Texas A&M, uh, North Georgia, and Virginia Tech. Uh, of all those, VMI is the only one. We're kind of unique within the, that uh, those group of colleges because we are the only one with no civilian students. Uh, everyone at VMI is a cadet and everyone must complete four years of ROTC, although commissioning is optional. We're also one of the three smallest colleges in the country 
to be playing a major college division one athletic program. Uh, VMI is different from the other colleges that you've heard from tonight and most colleges in the United States. Uh, when, if you come to VMI, you can expect a, to live a very Spartan lifestyle. We talk about things like structure, discipline, honor, uh, challenge, and the system that we uh, provide here, we hope will instill uh, these positive characteristics in our graduate uh, along with a very strong academic program. We're looking for men and women who are physically fit and who are looking to be leaders and individuals who serve in their country and in their communities. First and foremost, VMI is a college. We uh, have only 14 majors and you see them listed here. Uh, VMI believes that academic excellence is ma maintained in a small college and, uh, with a limited number of disciplines that offer degrees. Our faculty is hired because of their desire and their ability to teach at the undergraduate level. They do conduct research, they do writing, but their primary area of responsibility is teaching in the classroom. Uh, we have no graduate programs, as I mentioned before, so we have no graduate teaching assistants. Our classes are small. We have a 10 to one student faculty ratio and uh, virtually all of the faculty hold a PhD. They also serve as mentors and academic advisors. So you develop a very personalized relationship with the faculty members that are here. There are also a large number of study abroad opportunities, undergraduate research opportunities as well for the cadets at VMI. As I said, every cadet at VMI must take four years of ROTC and we have all branches that are offered. VMI is the only military college to graduate a ranking four-star generals across three uh, uh, areas. We've had two Marine Corps commandants, we've had the Army Chief of Staff, and an Air Force Chief of Staff. And across the Department of Defense programs, uh, of the ROTC programs, VMI typically commissions more officers than any other college. We, as I said, uh, require ROTC, but commissioning is optional. And right now, we have about 55 or 60 percent of the graduates each year that will go on active duty as commissioned officers. But we do, as I said before, instill and try to instill the idea of service in the community to all of our graduates. As I said, we're the third smallest college to be playing division athletics. So the teams at VMI are comprised of both scholarship and walk-on athletes. So it does provide an opportunity for young men and women to play division of uh, NCAA athletics at the division one level that you might not have at a lot of other colleges. We also have a huge number of club sports and actually as many cadets at VMI play club sports as are involved in our NCAA athletic program. We have a, an early decision program, it's binding. If you apply to us by the 15th of November, we will give you an initial decision by the 15th of December. If you're not offered admission, you are considered along with those students who meet the February 1 regular decision application date. Um, although February 1 is the deadline, we encourage you to apply early because we're on rolling admissions and the earlier you apply, the earlier you'll hear from, from us. Not only are we looking for a strong academic record, the profile uh, you can see on this slide, uh, we're looking for things like involvement in extracurricular activities, motivation, leadership. Uh, we consider recommendations, interest in VMI, uh, and one letter of recommendation is required from your high school but we do encourage others as well. We are fortunate in that we are one of the highest uh, ranked public colleges in the country in terms of the endowment per student. This allows us to award substantial financial aid, need-based financial aid, merit-based athletic scholarships, and a large percentage of the cadets at VMI either come in the door 
uh, with an ROTC scholarship or they pick up an ROTC scholarship once they're here. We are uh, encouraged interviews and you have the opportunity to come actually on post for an interview, but also do one virtually. And also we have six open house programs scheduled for this fall. They will be on post. And uh, of course, we're, we'll be taking appropriate uh, cautions to make those a safe environment. This is our contact information and we uh, would encourage any uh, questions to be addressed at this admissions at vmi.edu. Thanks a lot. Wonderful, thank you so much VMI. We'll go ahead and head on over to our final institution of this session, Liberty University. Well, good evening, y'all. Uh, my name is John. I'm one of the admissions representatives here at Liberty University. Uh, Liberty University is one of the world's largest Christian universities based in Central Virginia, as you can kind of see on the logo right over Liberty University, uh, based in Lynchburg. It's very centrally located to Richmond, Roanoke, DC, Raleigh, uh, in Charlotte, North Carolina. So on uh, located in the heart of the Blue Ridge Mountains, you have over 7,000 acres where you can explore and uh, come be a student where we are training champions for Christ. And so let's talk a little bit about our academics at Liberty University. We do have over 200 undergraduate degree programs housed by 15 different schools uh, and colleges. So um, within that, our student body, about 15,000 students attend classes on campus. Now about half live on campus and half live off campus. Now that is a big number. I won't lie about that. However, uh, one way that we do really work through that is again, by having multiple classes offered at the same time. And so we have a 21 to one student to professor ratio. And right now you might be excited to learn that we are offering classes hundred percent in person as well into, as well as doing hundred percent in person visits. We uh, do request that our professors offer 10 office hours weekly uh, in order to engage with you as students so that you feel seen, you feel understood, and you feel heard. And that if you do have any questions and you don't feel comfortable asking them, like I said, in one of those smaller classes, uh, you can go and chat with them directly. We also do offer study abroad opportunities um, through our LU Send office. So if you want to go and study uh, somewhere else for a semester, you do have that opportunity. Um, a couple of programs I always love highlighting is our School of Aviation, where we received the Loaning Award the last three years. That's granted to the top overall aviation program in the country. Uh, we do also offer pre-med, pre-PT, um, as well as pre-law. So if you're looking to become a doctor, lawyer, nurse, engineer, or even a musical artist, we do have a degree for that. Uh, Liberty University is a Division I school. We have over 20 NCAA Division I sports, including men's and women's basketball, football, baseball, softball, soccer, indoor and outdoor track and field, cross country. Um, we do also have 40 club sports teams um, and then 20 plus intramural sports. Now, if you decide that you want to uh, try out for one of the Division I teams or the club sports teams, they do oftentimes have tryouts or walk on tryouts for the Division I programs um, that you could definitely be a part of. So come be a part of game day, be early, be loud, wear red. Something else about Liberty University is with our dining in mind, we have been rated top 20 this year for our dining halls. Recently, we were rated number one in the country for two years in a row, so everybody stepped their game up, but we still hold that same quality. Um, our housing services have been rated number nine in the USA with three different styles. So we have our hotel style, our apartment style, and our classic dorm room style. Um, the prices would fluctuate uh, throughout the style that you choose. So you can see on there, um, we do have some options uh, that uh, Sedexo has provided us with, but we also do have retail options, including four Chick-fil-A's within a five mile radius of campus, a couple Starbucks on campus, as well as three Dunkin' Donuts. So you never have to choose which coffee is your favorite. Now let's talk about student life on campus. We'll start with a picture on the far left. Uh, that is a representation of what we call Snowflex. It's one of the only places like it on the entire East Coast because it is year round skiing, snowboarding, and tubing. Now, if you have a heart for performance at the very bottom, you can see a little coffee cup and that's for Coffee House. It's basically our version of a talent show where if students want to do a musical act, a comedy act, or they want to submit a video that they think is pretty funny, you can do that. Uh, typically, that's one of our most attended events. Now, you may be saying, John, that's typically in person. That's okay. Our student activities team is actually working right now to offer it virtually. So we'll be having coffee house, but it'll be held virtually. Uh, if you wanna work out, we do have our La Haye Recreation and Fitness Center that has a cardio loft, has all the free weights, heavy weights that you're gonna want. We have a three-story rock climbing wall, two indoor soccer courts, five basketball courts, and then we have four courts that we can be transitioned to volleyball, uh, racquetball, 
CrossFit. If you want to do a cycling class, we can do all of that. And then on the far right, we have Convocation. It's the largest weekly gathering of Christian young people in the world happening on Wednesdays and Fridays. But right now, again, it's being held virtually to be practicing social distancing and all the guidelines we've been provided with by the CDC. Now let's talk about admissions. At Liberty University, your first step is going to be submitting your admissions application. Now I will say for the upcoming spring 21, summer 21, and fall 21 semesters, Liberty University will be test optional. Now something to note is that if you do want to better your opportunities at getting an academic scholarship, uh, we would recommend at least making attempts to take those tests or even taking another standardized test called the CLT. Um, now, when you look at those scores right there, that is a 50% range. So if you don't fall within there, have no fear. 50% of students have either gone above that 3.83. Again, that's an unweighted high school GPA and even gone below it. So turn everything in. We do evaluate you as a whole student rather than just by your grades. Now let's talk about supporting you as a student at Liberty University. We have our College of Applied Studies and Academic Success with uh, peer review as well as testing and tutoring. If you want to take a CLEP test, if you need to take a GRE, an MCAT, an LSAT, anything we can do to help prepare you for your academic future, we want to help you there. Our Career Center is there to help you with resume writing, cover letter writing, as well as mock interviews, as well as career specific job fairs to help you again get prepared for your future. And finally, we want to make sure that we recognize all areas of wellness. And so we have our Center for Health and Wellness, uh, where we emphasize in this case, physical wellness, as well as mental and spiritual wellness, and making sure that your mental health as well as your spiritual health is in tip top shape. Now looking at cost, Liberty is in the lower 25% of all private universities when considering cost. 96% of our students do utilize uh, some form of financial aid. So whether that's uh, grants, scholarships, outside scholarships, um, you know, loans are a thing. I don't personally recommend them, um, but if you do need additional help, uh, we do offer federal work study. Now we'd love for you to come visit us on campus. Um, some of these options are going to be virtual. Our experience LU is going to be in person. It's a full day tour. But if you have any questions, feel free uh, to give me an email at jrtravis.liberty.edu. If you want to claim an app waiver, text that number right there. But please ask any questions in the Q&A. Thank you so much for your time. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Liberty University. We will go ahead and wrap things up now. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we hope that you found this information helpful. Uh, whenever this window closes, you will see a quick four question survey. And so please go ahead and fill that out. It's always very helpful for us to get a little bit of feedback on these sessions. And I'm sure that um, our college representatives will also really appreciate that. Remind, reminder that you can sign up for more sessions at www.strivescan.com backslash Virginia and that a recording of this session will be available at that same link uh, within the next seven days or so. So once again, a big thank you to you all for joining. A big thank you to all of our college representatives for joining us as well. Hope you found everything helpful and perhaps most importantly, I hope you all have a great night. So long. <laughs>